Joining us now to discuss what has been accomplished is the head baseball coach at BYU and NCAA basketball referee <laughs> alumnus, Mike Littlewood. Coach, welcome back to Studio B. Thanks, guys. Great to be here. Cha championship. Yeah, congratulations. Let's celebrate congratulations. Yeah. That's very cool. Very Thank cool. Thank you. I know that you had some of your refereeing buddies in town <laughs> to hassle the umpires. They, yeah. They, they were loud. I mean, are you going to take them to Stockton to uh, – to help set the mood? It would be nice. The, they hassle the umpires after they hassled me in the office <laughs> for two and a half days. So I was, it was, at the end, I was almost like, hey, don't let the door hit you, you know. <laughs> but, you know, man, the refereeing, that, that's, it's, it's so unique, that camaraderie you de develop with those guys. Because there are three guys on the court, and you've got 20,000 people that absolutely hate you. Well, 10,000 like you every, every other whistle, you know. But you're out there, and I, I've gone through a lot of a lot of stuff with those guys, and and uh, great guys to come take a take a couple of days away from their families to come and just watch games and golf and spend some time with us. So it's it's pretty cool. What was the weekend like for you? Because Friday you get the walk off, Saturday you sweep on ESPNU, very cool, and then you're watching San Diego beat Gonzaga, and then you're watching St. Mary's. So it was the, it was this long fun, I imagine, weekend. It was special, yeah. It was a special uh, special week for us, um, and we were talking before. You know, there was one scenario that we wouldn't get in, and that was if we got swept, if uh, USD sweeps Gonzaga and Pepperdine loses two out of three. And as a head coach, I mean, you know, and, and you hit it, Jeremy, you don't look at any other aspect of your life this way, but I'm, I'm doomsday with that stuff. <laughs> I look at the most negative po possible thing that could happen, like we could get swept, USD could sweep, and we're going to be out. And, and so the anxiety level just goes up, up, up. Uh, but we got it done. We got it done Thursday night. It turns out that Gonzaga did win, and uh, but I'm, I'm super proud of our guys. I mean, just 15 or 16 comeback wins this year. It's just, that's a special team. You just, that doesn't happen all the time. And man, my hat's off to those guys, especially Eric Urey and Hayden Nielsen, who have led this team on the field and, and probably more importantly, off the field. A walk-off win on Friday night. And if, and I made the point earlier, if you don't win that game, you're not Try champions of the West Coast Conference. We're not try champions, and our RPI probably drops. Uh, and your seating in the tournament is seating not in as the good. tournament. Yeah, I mean, you don't. We, I've talked about this a lot. I mean, we got 37 wins this year, but it feels like every single time we go on the field, it's a must win. And I don't know if that's just me, but I I think that's the truth. I mean, with our RPI riding right right along there, we're not an automatic. Uh, just hey, there, BYU's in no matter what. I think Gonzaga might be in that situation, but I don't think we are. I feel like we probably have to get to the championship game. Um, if Pepperdine or St. Mary's wins the, the West Coast Conference tournament, then uh, that puts a little bit more pressure on us because Gonzaga and, and, and us have the two highest RPIs. And so if you, if you get another team that wins a tournament and gets that auto bid, you know, so there's a lot of stuff that goes in. So it is. It, the next game is the most important game, and it's just felt like that for, for 52 games that we played this year. Our Twitter question today is this. What does a regular season conference championship mean to BYU fans? What does it mean to you? I uh, mean, it means a lot. I mean, uh, hopefully um, people think it's special because it sure is a whole lot of work. Um, there's, this is a good league. I mean, there's not – Portland's had a tough year, but we saw Santa Clara just the other week who, or just last week who uh, finished second to last in, in the league, but they're competitive. I mean, they're, they're a, a decent team. They pitch it really well. They're – the white kid that the day two started was like 96, 97 in the first couple innings. I mean, top five in the NCAA in strikeouts. Unbelievable. Um, the, the type of the type of teams we're facing. So it takes a lot of work and people don't understand some some may. But we've been out here for, since September 8th every single day in the weight room on the field, working, working hard to try to accomplish these goals. And, uh, you know, it's just it's kind of nice to see. But it's only a check mark. You know, it's only a check mark on the way to our our. I guess our ultimate goal is getting getting to a regional, and man, we're so close. It's uh, you know that again takes the anxiety level just up a little bit more. I, last year, my our first year here, it was great to be in the tournament. Hey, you know, let's go, let's try to win a game. It feels different this year. It feels like this is a tournament we can win and we should win if if we have a couple of pitchers step up. Speaking of pitchers and stepping up, you have Mike Rucker going on Thursday night uh, head to head with his former team Gonzaga. And from what I could tell and conversations that I've had with some of your players and just from me looking at, at the paperwork and how, how the matchups happen, the Gonzaga matchup in the first round is good because if you can get by the Zags like you did in game one of the series earlier this year, you avoid the day one starters of St. Mary's and Pepperdine potentially in the second game. So it would appear, I don't know, at least numbers-wise, that that's a, it's a good seeding for BYU. 
Yeah, no, I, I think it is. I mean, I think the two best pitchers in the league as far as stuff goes, you know, potential big leaguers are Burns for St. Mary's and Puckett for Pepperdine. I mean, these guys are mid, mid to upper 90s with three pitches for strikes. They're strikeout guys. Uh, we're going to see a good pitcher as well. I mean, Bailey's one of the best pitchers on the West Coast, um, and we'll see him on Thursday night. He's, he's 92, 93 with a tremendous changeup, which is in, in baseball, that's kind of the equalizer. If you can throw a changeup, you can beat anybody. Then, the, you know, the, the other thing, too, about it is if you face Gonzaga day two, they throw a kid named Eli Morgan out, out at you. He's got a 1-1-4 uh, ERA, so he's given up 1.1 runs per nine innings, and he's only 8-0 in, in league play. So um, it, Gonzaga is a really good team, probably, probably in my mind, the best offensive team, one through nine. Um, th they have a lot of pitching depth, and so it's not going to be easy. D don't get me wrong, but um, – I would I would probably not choose to, to face Puckett uh, of Pepperdine. He's pretty electric. He's given up three earned runs the entire um, the entire league play. Oh my goodness! And a point four zero ERA. He's given up a half a run per nine innings. Those three run, earned runs were against us, uh, and he hasn't given up any others. Wow, that, that's silly. Wow, it's, it's silly. Yeah, that is wild. So yeah, Thursday night, uh, seven Pacific, ten Eastern, there in Stockton on BYU Radio. Uh, the matchup with Gonzaga. You know you have Mike Recker. After that is kind of the question mark, mm -hmm. especially in this tournament style where you're going double elimination, you want to go all out. Uh, what, what are you thinking for game two at this point? Well, I think it really kind of depends on uh, whether Keaton Senatiempo throws a Thursday night or not or how much he throws. I mean, I think he's probably established himself as maybe a day two starter for us in a tournament setting like this. You know, we've got guys with, with great stuff. Riley Gates has great stuff. Uh, maybe he has to get out of his own way a little bit uh, mentally. Connor Williams the same way. Uh, they had rough outings. There's, there's Riley threw one inning uh, on Friday, and Connor came out and threw an inning and a third, which really put our put our staff and, and our guys stepped up. I mean, Mason Marshall stepped up, e Easton Walker stepped up, Bo Burrup stepped up, and, and Senna Temple stepped up and got us that sweep. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, when you're playing the top four teams and the three teams in the league, it's it's going to be pretty tough to do if if we don't get good starting pitching. BYU baseball coach Mike Littlewood with us in Studio B on BYU Sports Nation, recapping a sweep of the weekend to win a share of the West Coast Conference Championship in the regular season, and now previewing the WCC tournament, which starts in Stockton, California, on Thursday. What does your team have to do this year for all of you coaches and players to feel like, yeah, this season was an overall success? Well, t to be honest with you, I feel like we've had a great season, and, and uh, if we go lose two games, that, that's always going to be. You, know, you, you end the season like that when you know you shouldn't um, finish like that. It, it would be a disappointment, but you, there's no way you could look back on the season and say it was a disappointment no matter what from here on. So we feel good about it, um, but you always want to win your last game. And, and at the college level in 20 years, 22 years, I've only won my last game one time Ooh. You know, in 2004. And that's a national championship. So it, that's the thing about athletics. It's just like you, you have to keep going forward. But it, I, I look at this season as a success right now. Have we met all of our goals? No, but we've checked off a few of them. Um, and we understand what it's going to take to get to the next level. What was it like to uh, have that final game for your two seniors, with Hayden Nielsen and Eric Urey? Uh, bittersweet. Uh, really, Hayden's been with me from the start. He was uh, – Vance, Vance Law's group – um, recruited him and and fortunately he was um, it came from Spanish Fork and fortunately he was a, a guy that we could re really rely on it started every single game at shortstop rarely I think I pulled him out of one game and that was at UNLV um, and he can talk a little bit more about why I did that <laughs> it was him and Brennan Anderson they didn't quite show up to play that day but he cl something clicked in his mind and he's like I need to be I need to be better and and just a main cog in this team and Eric Urey got three years for us after after transferring and like I said, uh, when, when you were showing the video, I, I just really feel like those guys, they're, they're really good players, and they've done great on the field. But the way they've led the younger guys, have mentored the younger guys, has just meant it, it's meant the difference. The culture before, I think, may have been when you're a senior, you just uh, you'd be a senior and let everybody else go. Right now, our seniors and juniors are embracing the young guys, and it's really, really important on a team. We've got some nice hardware uh, up on the uh, set here. 
a Mountain Pacific Sports Federation men's volleyball regular season championship. That's the tournament title. Yeah. Oh, that's the tournament championship. That's, that's, tournament. that's right. Yeah. That's really cool. So, yeah, um, Sean doesn't care about that. <laughs> with, with trophies in mind, when do you get your West Coast Conference trophy? I have no idea. <laughs> and, and I haven't even thought about it until you guys just asked me. I don't know. It's going to be, you know, when you get something like that, it's real. you can look at it and say that, think about all the work you put in. But um, I, I think as coaches, we don't really look at anything like that. We, we really don't. Um, the, the trophies are awesome, but to be able to say you won your last game, that's, that's pretty special. You win the regular season. You obviously want to win the tournament. Heaven forbid you're in a situation where you have to wait to see if you get in the NCAA tournament and it comes down to the committee. But where do you feel like you have to be? Where, where, where will you feel comfortable in the RPI and all that uh, on Selection Monday if you don't win the tournament? If, if we are playing Gonzaga in the championship game, I feel like we're going to get in. I feel like that's, that's the perfect scenario. Um, obviously, perfect, I guess, would be us winning. But if, we're, if, if it's us and Gonzaga, then I think we have a really good chance. If, it's, if we don't get to the championship game, then I'm going to keep my fingers crossed and just hope that somebody sees that we, we try to put together a RPI-friendly schedule, challenge ourselves, go on the road early, won the games we, that were on our schedule. And realize how good our league is this year. Our league is really good this year. It's it's be the best I've seen parity-wise in four years um, with our starting pitching and the depth of the position players uh, in in all ten teams. And so, you know, I, I but for me, I feel like we're okay if we get to the championship game. Is the key to the whole tournament game one? It seems like if if you it, can it win initially, you're in. Yeah, business. it is. I mean, if you if you lose game one, you come back the next day at noon, so you get off the field. Especially for us, we're playing at seven o'clock. Pacific time, we get off the field like we did last year at like 11.30, and we showed back up at the field at 9 o'clock for, for a noon game. And we played well, but it's a, it's a weird feeling. And then if you win that, you, you get to play another one that day. And then if you win that, you get to play two more the next day to win it. So it's a tough road. That game one is really, really important. Is there any chance that Mike Rucker throws any pitches on any other day besides Thursday in the West Coast Conference Tournament? The only way that would happen is if uh, – he threw one pitch or 10 pitches and we had a rain delay. They canceled the game and then he could come back. But mm. once he warms up and once he throws, you know, 50 pitches, then, then he's done. We, I wouldn't, I would never bring Mike back on short rest uh, in a situation like that to try to win, to try to win a game. We would, we would just rely on the guys who have done it all year to try to step up that are, that are bullpen guys. Coach, congratulations again on the West Coast Conference regular season championship, sharing it with St. Mary's and Gonzaga and some BYU Sports Nation karma delivered to you now for the approaching WCC tournament in Stockton, California. Good luck, man. Thanks, and, and thanks to you guys. Uh, you've been great all year, and this is an awesome venue, and, and uh, let's keep it rolling. Let's Absolutely. Keep going, baby. Let's, let's go, thanks, man. Let's thanks, guys. Lock your doors.